You want to know what real life nursing is all about? This is the Daily Round Show by NRSNG.com. Hey guys, what's up? It's Susan with NRSNG. I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about intubation and the nurse's role in intubation. So the first thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to get the intubation box uh, for the physician and a glidoscope just in case. You will want to have your respiratory therapist at bedside as well as a technician or a medic as we have medics on my unit so whatever kind of assistance that you can have and then I always make sure that my partner or you know another nurse is aware that I'm doing an intubation so they can go grab anything if I need them to. Your responsibility will be to push the medications and to know what order to give the medications. You always sedate before you paralyze because if you don't, the patient will be mentally awake and unable to move their arms and that's a very scary thing. And people have written about how they are petrified of that feeling and it can cause PTSD and all sorts of things. It could also cause your patient's vital signs to go irregular and you don't want that either. So sedate them so they don't remember what's going on, then you give the paralytic. Then you want to, of course, note the time that you gave that, note the time that the physician started the intubation, and if they do need the glidoscope, note that they used that. I would also, you know, note the time that they finish, and the physician usually will yell out uh, whether what number the tube is at and what location. So it can be, you know, 23 at the lips or 22 at the teeth. So you want size of the tube and then you want its number and it's whether it's measured by the lips or by the teeth. And then the respiratory therapist will connect their capnography reader and it sits on the top. It's a square thing and when they push the bag there will be a positive color change if it is in the correct area and it will be a, not a color change if it's down the esophagus. So you will want to note at what time the color change happened and then you want to listen to their lungs and make sure that you can hear when the air is being pushed into their lungs and note the um, areas in which you were listening. Then you will uh, want to make sure that there is an x-ray ordered and that you get the x-rays down to bedside to be taken so that the placement is confirmed via x-ray. Before you actually do the x-ray, you'll probably want to throw in an OG tube uh, just in case you never know what you'll need that for. So the patient has had their uh, gag reflex taken away and so you'll want to put in an OG tube to help suction out any of the gastric secretions so it doesn't come up and end up in your patient's lungs. So you'll want to place that before you get the x-ray. Once you get the x-ray and placement has been confirmed of both the tube and the OG tube, you will want to make sure that there is medication on board to keep your patient sedated. So usually intubating your patient isn't like a timed thing. It's not like, oh, at, you know, 2200, we're going to intubate this patient because that's on the docket for the day. That's not usually how it goes unless you are doing OR or something along those lines. Um, it's usually like, whoa, this patient isn't able to keep a clear airway, so we are going to intubate them now. And so pharmacy usually requires a little bit of time to calculate and make sure that the dosage is correct and get it to you. It's usually not something that is kept in the PIXs for IV infusion. You can use Propofol or um, Ativan has been used, fentanyl it can be used to help sedate the patient after they've been intubated. When that comes, make sure you've got pump and tubing ready to rock and roll so that that patient can receive it as soon as possible. And the one thing that I would do is I would make sure that I keep on hand soft restraints. Do not, under any circumstances, place soft restraints without an order. However, you don't want to have your patient wake up from the anesthesia and be pulling around and the doctor's like, okay, we can put soft restraints on them and they, and you're like, oh, where are the soft restraints? <laughs> I don't have any in this room right now or whatever. Just have them on hand just in case you need to help that patient if they aren't responding to the anesthesia or the sedation properly because you do not want them to lose their airway. So it is a safety thing. And the last thing I wanted to talk to you a little bit about was propofol 
it's actually the agent that my hospital uses most often but if your patient is a known alcoholic they will not respond to propofol so you need to make sure that if they're a known alcoholic that you at least mention it to the doctor or urge them to maybe consider another sedative agent because that one probably isn't going to work so those are the best steps I can come up with for intubation and the nurse's role in intubation. All right, bye guys.